one in every four aircraft carriers in the world belongs to the United States, and their total combined deck space is more than double that of all the other nations combined. But the biggest worry for competing nations isn't that, it's the United States supercarrier. This $13 billion aircraft carrier holds the title of the largest, most powerful aircraft carrier in the world. Now, there have been many supercarriers over the years, with one losing the title after a successor is introduced, like the James Bond title. Welcome to the USS John F. Kennedy, the 21st century supercarrier. U.S. Supercarriers Supercarrier is the unofficial title given to the most capable type of aircraft carrier in operation. And today, the USS John F. Kennedy holds that title, making it the most valuable sea-based asset and the go-to option whenever the United States faces any major threat. Russia and China know this and have spent decades trying to catch up with the United States. Still, it's impossible to compete with the American aircraft carriers for two main reasons. Firstly, the US just has too many. In fact, China currently holds a tied second position with the United Kingdom in terms of the number of aircraft carriers in operation, amounting to two. But still, they're more than a stone's throw away from the top spot, the United States. Then there's the quality of aircraft carriers too. With almost a century of experience in developing aircraft carriers, the United States has proven to know their stuff and has always had the number one aircraft in the world in terms of quality since the end of World War II. How does the US come to supercarriers? World War II would prove to be the biggest advertisement for aircraft carriers. The ability to combine the forces of the Navy and the Air Force was revolutionary. And here's how. Strike fighters are more lethal, more precise, and make a far clearer statement than naval guns, but their range would betray them and limit them from getting involved in any action far away from friendly borders. The range of the Navy, on the other hand, is simply anywhere in the world, literally. And the light bulb moment to integrate both parties was a no-brainer, and so the aircraft carrier was born. But that was only going to be the start of a new type of war, as many other nations designed and built their aircraft carriers. It quickly became clear that the nation with the most beastly aircraft carrier would always be more likely to win any battle. The race began, and the United States sprinted like Usain Bolt at the 2008 Beijing Olympics, creating a beast so powerful that a new title had to be invented to describe it, the supercarrier. Since then, it's been upgrade after upgrade to keep the supercarrier, well, super. A century of upgrades later, the U.S. introduced Gerald R. Ford class carriers with the USS Gerald Ford and USS John F. Kennedy, so far being the only two members. And with the features they boast of, it would be a scary thing if another was added to the class. Gerald Ford class features The Ford class was designed to keep up with the 21st century and carry out the widest array of mission sets from air interdiction and anti-surface warfare to offensive and defensive air counter. Now, we take a look at the top five features that make this level of invincibility possible. Number five, power generating reactors. The USS John Kennedy must be self-sustaining for long stretches of time, and in this period must power everything on board, from its electromagnetic catapult to its top-of-the-line multifunction radar and even laser-directed energy weapons of the future. It must also move at high speeds of about 30 knots to be considered agile enough to be a weapon and not just an easy target sitting ducks in the middle of the ocean. For these electrical and propulsion needs, supercarriers are powered by nuclear reactors, which are just like nuclear bombs, but not really. And on the USS John Kennedy are two A1B reactors, the most powerful nuclear reactor of all. This reactor marks a milestone of its own and it generates 25% more power than its predecessor, the A4W reactor, which powers the Nimitz-class aircraft carriers, the Top Dog carrier class, before the Gerald Ford class came to be. The A1B reactor packs enough power to light up entire cities and understandably so, since the USS John Kennedy is a bustling city on its own. You'll find proof of that in its ever-busy internal compartments and its massive deck space. Number four, the massive deck space. The deck space of the USS John Kennedy is 1,106 feet long 
and has a beam measurement of 256 feet, making it longer than three football fields placed side by side and earning it its title of the largest aircraft carrier in history. With such space comes room to hold more ammunition and aircraft. This results in a 33% increase in sortie flights compared to the Nimitz-class carriers. The sortie of a carrier refers to the number of flights per day from the deck of the carrier and it is the single most important metric to determine carrier lethality. And increased sortie flights relate to more guns in the sky and therefore more worry for the opposition. And then there's also the pro of having more personnel on board to prepare and fly the planes, keep the carrier running smoothly, and handle weapons more effectively. Some would say a larger deck means there's more ground to cover to get weapons loaded on jets, but this isn't necessarily so. Thanks to some genius routing and automation, the journey from the weapons bay to aircraft on deck is closer to a straight line than on any other carrier. Number 3. Advanced Launching and Arresting Gear Systems Launching gear systems are used to rapidly accelerate aircraft for launch while arresting gear systems rapidly decelerate aircraft on arrival. Without these on an aircraft carrier, pilots might get better at swimming than flying because jets could easily roll into the ocean due to insufficient lift. The USS John Kennedy has an electromagnetic powered launch system and advanced arresting gear systems that launch and stop jets in the shortest possible time and distance. Compared to the steam-powered launch systems and Mark 7 arresting systems on the Nimitz-class carriers, the USS John Kennedy has an immeasurable advantage, especially since every second counts during battle. And that's not all that gives the supercarriers an edge. Since it was built in the 21st century, modern technology was smoothly integrated during the build. Nimitz-class carriers, however, were commissioned in the 1970s and are only somewhat up-to-date thanks to upgrades and this may or may not integrate as well if they're built into the carrier from the get-go. Number 2. Multifunctional Radar Radars are the primary sensors on any military vehicle, be it fighter aircraft, tanks, or aircraft carriers. To carry out their duties, military personnel must be kept abreast of all info regarding their surroundings, both immediate and miles away. Only thanks to radars is this possible. But older aircraft carriers have a ton of different radar systems, each doing its own stuff. While this isn't necessarily bad, too many screens can be confusing. The military agrees with this and has on the supercarrier a multifunctional radar that does it all, from measuring distances to pulse Doppler signal processing. Number 1. Quality of Life Enhancements A machine is only as strong as the crew that runs it. The USS John Kennedy understands this best and has amenities in place to keep its crew eagle-eyed and agile enough to make a monkey jealous. It has a boatload, literally, of life enhancement spaces including state-of-the-art gyms, berthing compartments, ergonomic spaces, and so on. The result? Some of the most hard-working people in the world being able to operate a moving city on their own and maintain its might to dominate the battlefield when the action is about to go down. Aircraft carriers have proven to be the largest statement makers. To an extent, they directly determine a nation's international influence. In fact, thanks to the range of the United States carriers across the oceans, the nation has a reach that spans every continent without depending on the vulnerable bases of allied nations. Russia is one country that is surprisingly not in this race though. Do you think they are slacking off? Let me know what you think in the comments section. We could put a call to Mr. Putin to ask why they've let China get so far ahead, but... Only if you subscribe to this channel and give this video a thumbs up. That's going to be all for this video. Thank you for watching.